Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Daryl. Welcome back to this AWS machine learning series. In the previous lesson, we just learned how to build and train an Amazon SageMaker models. And based on these SageMaker models, we learned how to deploy a model endpoint. And now we are ready to switch a little bit of our role from the chef in Amazon SageMaker to the waitress AWS Lambda. So we will, what we are going to do in this uh, lessons is that we will create an AWS Lambda functions to help us to serve the customers and invoke the endpoint. So from now on, we will be the waitress. What we need to do is to take the order and trigger the endpoint and also trigger the SNS service, the delivery service if needed. Um, but before we dive into the contents, we dive in into the programming part, let's learn a bit of the Lambda. AWS Lambda is a compute surface that allows us to run our cooks without provisioning or managing the surface. So in that case, this is a serverless compute surface that allows to allow us to do something to perform some computations. And why is Lambda? Why is AWS Lambda in our cases? In our projects, remember that we would like to use the API scale rate and take the order from there. We would like to serve it back to our customer. Um, in that case, with the Lambda functions, we can run our code for virtually any types of applications or the backend service. So in our cases, this backend service is the SageMaker endpoint that allows us to make the predictions. On the other hand, the lambdas can also run our function in response to the event from other AWS service. And then for this other AWS service, what I mean here is this, the API's gate rate. That is the request from the customer via this API's gate rate. So in that case, with the use of this AWS Lambda functions, it allows us to take the orders or take the request from the customer and allow us to invoke our backend service and provide an appropriate response to our customer based on their request. So how do we work with these Lambda functions? First of all, we need a Lambda function handler which is available in different types of language that could be a Python, Java, or JavaScript, or so and so. And in our cases, we will use Python. This handler is actually a method that allows us to, or that help us to process the events. So when your functions, when this Lambda functions is invoked, these Lambdas will run this handler methods to help us to process the event. And in our projects, there are two key steps um, that these Lambda functions will help us. First of all, these Lambda functions will help us to uh, kickstart, invoke this, um, this handler. And these handlers will take in two arguments. The first argument is an event object. And the second argument is the context object. The event object is a JSON, is in JSON format. This is the request from the customer. And then this is a JSON format that contains the data, contains the request. And then that this handler will help us to convert this event to an object and pass the relevance information or the past information to our function code. And then the second argument is the context objects, context objects. So this context objects is a, is run by a Lambda runtime. And then it will provide informations about the invocations, the functions, and also the runtime environment. So therefore in step one, this Lambda, this Lambda function handler will help us to take the order from the customer. Uh, which is in JSON format. And then in the second step, once we know what we're going to do, what kind of orders that is, um, that is requested by the customer, then we will pass these informations to the backend. So two things that we're going to do is that we will serialize 
the input. We will have functions that help us to serialize the input and then pass this information, pass this, this input to the SageMaker endpoint and make inference. And then once we have the response, we will also return some value here, returns the response to the customer based on the request. Hence, as a waitress, we take the order from our customer and then we input the order and then invoke our chef, tell our chef to serve the dishes. And then once we have the dishes, we will bring it back to the customer. Before we set up the Lambda, let's create the Lambda functions handler. We will test it in the same SageMaker notebook. And then once this handler is ready, we will just copy and paste this code into the Lambda. So let's build this Lambda functions handler. The library that we need to import, that is the only libraries that is photo free, which is this to help us to create and also update and also delete any AWS resources because we need to invoke the SageMaker endpoint. So we need to use this photo free to help us to set up the runtime. So there are two things that we need to set up. One is the one is the endpoint name and the other is the runtime object. And so for the endpoint name, we remember that we use this endpoint name mappers to help us to achieve the SageMaker endpoint name. So we just need to copy and pass it to this variable. And then for the runtimes, we need to um, we need to set up the SageMaker runtime. So we just use this photo phrase to connect to the client's runtime doc SageMaker. And now we can define the Lambda handler function. This is the basic setting uh, that is to create this Lambda functions, uh, Lambda functions handler with the inputs with two input arguments that is the event um, object arguments and the and the other argument is the contest objects and the result we need, we need to return the result of this lambda handler functions before we set up some functions inside this lambda handler let's um create a and testing input, say this is a JSON input. And for a JSON input, we need to make it like a dictionary. So we need to provide a, a name and the value as a pair. Now just test it a bit. Um, just say result is equal to this event, and that will capture the data. And just uh, what we're going to do is to run this function, and then print out the result. The input should be the input JSON and contest. We are not going to pass any information because this is the info information from the runtime. So let's take a look. Excellent, it works perfectly. Now what we need to do is to serialize these inputs and then pass it on to our SageMaker. So let's say we serialize these inputs and this will be the input. Say this is the inputs and we want the only, the first element. And with these serialized inputs, 
we can now call out the endpoint. So here we use this one time, this SageMaker one one time to invoke the endpoints. There are three parameters, and the first parameter parameter is the endpoint name. That is the endpoint name. We already have that. And then the second parameter is the content type. Again, the content type is a CSV file. So we just put it as a TS, T, text slash CSV file. And finally, that is the body or so-called payload. And that will be our serialized uh, input. If the action if the action is successful, this endpoint will return you uh, some informations, and that include let me show you, and that includes the content types, the custom attributes, the uh, invoked uh, productions variants, and also the key parts that is the body that will include the inference provided by the models. So we need to read these bodies in the response. So to read the, to read the inference result, we will just call out the response. And then we will just um, call out the body from this response and with the result. And remember, um, if we just with the results, they, that will be a bytes type. So in that case, we need to decode it back to the um, to the string type. So now let me bring you the result. Excellent. So now we have the we we have the lambda handler set up properly for these times we just uh, get the input from one single element uh, in this list of the list uh, from only a single list so in that case we can also create a for loop to um, provide uh, multiple inference so in that case i will create a for loop Just create a empty list to store the result, and then for the for loops, uh, we have the input in these uh, inputs, and I will just change it to the input. And finally, I would like the result to be appended. Uh, for each of the elements in the list. So let's take a look to this function. Excellent. So these will be our lambda functions. And we just defined the lambda handler functions as well. In the next video, we will learn how to set up the lambda and then we will copy and paste these lambda functions into the lambdas over here so see you in the next video bye bye